If not for the courage of the fearless crew, poor Moses would be lost. Poor Moses would be lost. I'm going to invite you to sing along with me when that little ditty comes up throughout the sermon. Let's give it a try before we get going, all right? You've probably heard that tune. If not for the courage of the fearless crew, poor Moses would be lost. Poor Moses would be lost. Nice. All right, we'll uh, pick that up again later. Moses, who we're talking about today, is one of the greatest leaders of God's people. That's why he's mentioned in the Hebrews Hall of Faith. You might have heard that he led God's people out of slavery in Egypt and that he delivered the Ten Commandments. But could you name the courageous crew who saved his life before all of that? Please allow me to introduce you to five women who helped Moses to survive, and then you'll soon see why they were a courageous crew. Baby Moses was born into fearful and dangerous times. His people, the Hebrews, came to Egypt as immigrants, looking for food during a famine. They settled down, and then they just stayed in Egypt. And they had been on good terms with the king at that time when Joseph, one of the Hebrews, had predicted this trout, drought that made food scarce. You might remember Joseph and his coat of many colors. Because Joseph had warned the king to store up food, he put him second in command and put him in charge of distributing the food during the famine. But that king and Joseph were now long gone. There was a new king in charge, and he had no memory of Joseph the Hebrew. He saw the numerous Hebrew people as a threat. He was afraid that they might rise up against him someday. So to keep them down, he forced them into slave labor. He was ruthless toward them, and he made their lives very bitter. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied. You see, God had started fulfilling a promise to them to make them as numerous as the stars in the sky. Being filled with fear and dread, the king, called Pharaoh, devised another plan to keep them down. He summoned two midwives named Shiprua and Pua, and he ordered them to get rid of any Hebrew baby boys that were born. But what Pharaoh didn't count on was that these two women feared God more than they feared him. They refused to give in to hate, regardless of the consequences to their own lives. They would not follow Pharaoh's murderous decree. Ready? If not for the courage of the fearless crew, poor Moses would be lost. Poor Moses would be lost. Shiprua and Pua are number one and number two of the courageous crew. But Pharaoh wouldn't give up that easily. When he learned that this plan had failed and he'd been tricked, he decided to rally all of Egypt to watch for infant boys being born. He ordered that they were to be thrown into the Nile. He knew that rallying others to fear and hate the same group of people could bring his people together. It's an ugly tactic, and sometimes it's still used today. With the genocide decree still in place for boys, a Hebrew woman named Jochebed gave birth to a son. She hid him as long as she could, but after three months, she feared she could no longer keep him a secret from those Egyptians who were out to get him. So she found a baby-sized basket and diligently covered it with something like tar to make it waterproof. She carefully covered every inch so her baby wouldn't sink or drown. The Nile wouldn't swallow her son, not today. And although it must have been a very difficult thing to do, she trusted God and she placed him in the watery reeds of the river and walked away. But Moses' mother didn't send him off alone. His sister Miriam would follow along and stand watch over her baby brother. 
If not for the courage of the fearless crew, poor Moses would be lost. Poor Moses would be lost. Jochebed and Miriam are number three and number four of the courageous crew. Pharaoh's daughter, the princess, showed up with some of her maids to the exact spot where Moses was floating by. She told one of the maids to go get that basket and bring it to her. Now the princess recognized right away that this baby was a Hebrew boy. He was crying and she had great compassion for him, but she too was in a dilemma. She knew the law that her dad had put into place. Her dad, the most powerful man in all the land, not to mention her own household. But before she could figure out what to do, Miriam, the sister, came forward with a clever suggestion. She offered to bring the princess a Hebrew woman who could nurse and care for the crying, hungry baby. The princess said go, and Miriam came back with Moses' mother. If not for the courage of the fearless crew, poor Moses would be lost. Poor Moses would be lost. With the princess, now you have met all five of the courageous crew who helped Moses survive. Now, we may never find ourselves in a situation where another person's life is literally in danger, like the courageous crew did, but we probably do encounter someone who could use a hand or a friend or someone to, to defend them almost every day. An investigative show on TV was studying how people reacted after hearing someone in need. The po program secretly recorded the reactions of people who were sitting in one room when they heard someone fall and groan in pain in another room. Surprisingly, no one moved. <laughs> no one went next door to see what had happened or if they could help. Well, they interviewed the people later, and most of them explained that they just didn't want to intrude, and they thought someone else would come along and care for the injured person. And unfortunately, I think if we're all really honest with ourselves, we have all ignored the needs of others at some time or another. I know I am just as guilty as anyone. Perhaps you've been in a conversation where someone was saying hateful things about a group of people, just lumping them all together with some negative stereotype. And maybe you were uncomfortable with this, but you were afraid to speak up because you didn't want to get into an argument and you didn't think it would make much of a difference anyway. Or maybe you've seen people suffering and you wanted to share the hope and the peace that you have found in Jesus Christ with them but you were afraid to say anything. It's hard when we live in a culture that says, keep your religion to yourself. So we remain silent, afraid of offending someone, or sounding like a fool, or looking like one of those radicals in the news. We just don't want to be rejected. And other times, the suffering of the world feels so overwhelming we just don't believe that we have anything to offer that would make much of a difference. We're too young, too old, too shy, or too unimportant. And we assume someone else more qualified will come along and help. But the truth is, someone needs your help. Just as the courageous crew cared for baby Moses in ancient times, the world needs the same courage today from the followers of Jesus. Like the midwives, Shiprua and Pua, the world needs followers who refuse to give in to hate. And like the mother of Moses, the world needs people who are willing to take risks for those who are vulnerable. And like Miriam, the world needs those who are still willing to stand watch over those who do not have a voice. And like Pharaoh's daughter, the world needs people who are willing to stretch out their hands to help those in need, even when that person is very different from them. If this sounds scary, 
Remember that you are never, ever alone in your efforts to help someone. Jesus is always found where people are suffering. And Jesus himself said that when you reach out to help somebody in need, you are actually touching Christ himself. And frankly, we too would be as helpless as a baby floating through enemy territory if it weren't for the fiercely protective love of God whose every instinct it is to save. The good news is that our courage to help others comes from the crucified and risen Christ who walked on water, who is not blown away by the troubles of this world, and who gets into our boat saying, take courage, I'm here, do not be afraid. So give the world what it so desperately needs today, knowing this, we go forward with a fearless God who rescues and saves the lost, who rescues and saves the lost, amen. <laughs>